Yin calls out Israel Adesanya for middleweight belt. Congratulations on successful rematch, Stylebender. If you want to try another one, you know where to find me, this time at middleweight for your belt. And I told you I'm locked in. I'm coming, I'm coming for the kill. I'm hunting. So I did that. And I just wanted to show people the power of the human mind, the human spirit. You know, what, what you can do, no matter what, no matter if they count you. I watched too much anime, too much fucking, seen too many montages when the guy, Rock Lee, gets knocked down and has to fall. Guy Sensei has to fight back up and then fight through adversity. You know, you never stay down. Wasn't it Rock? Even Mike Angle was playing Rocky one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in the house all week. So I know you get knocked down seven times, get back up eight. But as mentally strong as you are, were there any moments along the way where it creeped into your, like a little bit of doubt creeped in? You thought maybe this guy just has my number for some reason. That's, that's human, that's human, um, I guess that's the human animal. It normally happens, but I just know myself. You know yourself. If you know yourself, no one else can tell you who you are. So I'm able to shut that out real quick. Uh, most people just can't do that. They, they let that negative self-talk sit in there and starts to weigh down on them. But I've been through too much in my life to be able to let this kind of thing weigh me down. So whenever that little dirty tries to creep in, I tell it to shut the fuck up and I keep going. Tense opening round, tactical. I know you said you wanted to put the pressure on him. How did you feel about the first round? It went quick. I was surprised. I thought it was three minutes. Um, but yeah, uh, I was on, bro. I was fucking on from the get-go, and I was hunting him down, and he wasn't comfortable with that. Was that a decision on your point to really turn it up in round two? Obviously, the volume increased quite a bit. I just knew I could hunt him down. Every time I fight this guy, first fight, second fight, third fight, I always have him in the early rounds. And then I just give him enough room to breathe so he can come back in the later rounds. So this time I said, I'm not giving him room to breathe. I'm going to suffocate him. And yeah, I embrace the dark side. I embrace the darkness so I can show him the light. Nice. Last thing for me. No, you said you were not thinking past this moment at I all. I'm not thinking. I literally you let don't. No, nope, nope, no. I'm still drinking. I ain't thinking. <laughs> Izzy, uh, obviously this week with the engaged stuff, there's been a link with yourself and Muhammad Ali. I know that's one that you've loved your, throughout your career. Yeah. Is it cool that you had your own rope dope moment? You know, you're against a big punch, you Brother, back and fire the right hand. The possum. So I'll tell you, he's fucking good with those leg kicks. And I was like, again? Literally, I think in the first round, I was like, fuck, again? He can't catch my leg. It was so quick because I was ready for it. I was ready to catch him. And he's so sneaky with that. I'm going to learn that off him, actually. But then... um. Yeah, I, I changed the tactics up a bit, and I listened to my corner, and I trusted my instinct. But there was a moment when I was visualizing this fight, I was like, if I get the chance, and when I get the chance, George Foreman, Muhammad Ali, phantom punch, would I just let him slide? But I was like, nah, fuck that. He wouldn't have done the same to me. He will, he'll fucking come for the kill. So the honorable thing I could have done was put him out of his misery. And after that rope dope moment, I saw him lying flat on the ground, frozen like Elsa. <laughs> <laughs> you also obviously had a quite an emotional celebration where you fired a, not one but three arrows into him. I wonder if there's a significance to there being the number of three arrows. And then I'm sure you sort of uh, motioned someone in the crowd and took a little dive. Oh no, I, that was, I'm petty, bro. I remember. So the first time he knocked me out in Brazil, um, his son came into the ring and then started to just lie dead next to me. And I'm like, you fucking little asshole. I'll whoop your ass if your dad don't do it for you. But then, um, yeah, I looked for his kid, and I, I pointed at him, and I saw him, and I was like, hey, hey, hey. Just to remind him. I saw him backstage. We're cool. He's a great champion. He's a warrior. He is his story, bro. I mean that. He's, I'm the antagonist in his story. He's a fucking beast, man, coming from where he's come from the adversities he's been through in his life to get to where he's get he's got he's gotten now and taking me out the way he has it's a fucking beautiful story for him but like i said tonight it's not about his story it's about my story which is history that didn't feel good, so going out there, I was actually, I actually messaged my mom right before I went out there and I was like, man, should I even be fucking fighting? She was like, I told you to stay home. So, uh, glad I didn't listen to mom this time. <laughs> Have you called her since to, to tell her that yeah, it was right for you to fight? No, it's been all media since, so I'm pretty sure uh, when I get on the phone with her, she's gonna be like, I told you you was gonna be good. You know, you know how moms is, they always gotta be right. <laughs> How about that back fist that you, you caught him with when he had your leg and you just kind of threw that back fist and actually hit him 
and actually hurt him a little bit. You, you know what's funny? Me and Juggernaut Suge over here, we actually we actually was working at about like a week or two ago. He had my foot in the air. No, it was actually the other day at practice. He had my foot in the air and I was just going like this with my hand, like get the fuck back, get the fuck back, get the fuck back, get the fuck back, get the fuck back. And I mean, in the fight, get the fuck back actually works. Uh, against him, get the fuck back just meant me having one dead leg and one leg in the air. So thank God. <laughs> and uh I guess, I mean, a win over him, I mean, what does that do for you, you think, right now in this division? I mean, does it help you to call some people out or is it just feel good to, to get it'd another be, knockout? It'd be, it'd be nice to be uh, sitting with a number, but if I don't, it's okay. Uh, I had a good time in there when I was in doubt. I pivoted out, shout out to D. Uh, my boy Cowboy talked my ear off before I went out there, got me back calm, because I was feeling some type of way. Uh, so overall, just, I mean, it just feels good to get a dub with the team and shit. If you guys know the crew that's out there with me, they've been with there with me since Contender Series and since my first UFC fight, so, uh, and even on local level. So it just feels good to get a dub with the squad and shit, feels good to be back on top. And obviously the stoppage was right, you know, but obviously uh, Ponsonibi, when he got up, he seemed a little bit upset. Did you, did you, get, a, you get a chance to talk with him afterwards? Uh, man, look, shout out to Ponsonibi, a tough guy, uh, vet in the game and stuff like that. But uh, at the end of the day, he was definitely out of there and, uh, I was a little mad at him because I kept asking him if he smelled weed and he wouldn't answer me, so <laughs> shit, fuck it. And then at the end, you called out Jorge, you wanted that BMF belt, but if, yeah, hey, I just man, what to happened this week? What was the genesis of that and why Why? Why the, the if craziness? You, if you week? asked me that question in front of Dana, what would he say? He'd say not ask about it. All right. So but that was before the fight. He didn't want to break up this fight. Well, you know what? Uh, when he's ready to talk about it, we'll talk about it. When, when Jorge's ready to talk about it or when Dana's ready to talk about it? When Dana's ready to talk about it. <laughs> Jorge's not my boss, Dana is. <laughs> but then you called him out, so is that what you want next or you want, you just want to get back Man, in there? I'll take, I take whatever they give me next, but uh, we all know that if, if Jorge loses this fight, he's probably going to retire. But if he doesn't retire and you guys sit up here and think about who's a better, who's the next person to hold a BMF belt, I mean, I do a lot of badass shit, you know what I mean? Uh, whether it's a carjacking and I stop that, whether it's a... Uh, 18 wheeler flipped over and me pulling a guy out whether it's somebody pull, whipping out a pistol at a sushi bar you know what i mean whether it's somebody on 7th street trying to pop some shit and me popping shit back i mean whatever the case may be i'm down for it you know what i mean so if it's gangster i do gangster well if it's respectful i do respectful well uh if it's professional i don't always do that got good but fuck it you know what i mean i just think i do everything better than george so why not if it doesn't go his way and he does lay the gloves down and he does retire is there respect with you for him or is for Jorge or do you just not even want to think about him because you wouldn't get a fight or do you have respect for his career and what he's done if he does well? I, I, you know, everything that he did before he started sucker punching people, I was a huge fan of. I was a big fan of Jorge Masvidal before he started doing all this bullshit. But uh, after that, I just kind of lost taste of it. And then uh, the the lies, uh, he's cloud chasing. Uh, bro, I don't really care about cloud. I want your BMF belt and that's it. Uh, simple as that. Awesome. Congrats, Kevin. Thank you, brother. Mr. Holland over here. How you doing, uh, David Power, congratulations on the big win. Uh, what, it, what it seemed like is you were a lot more comfortable in there. Uh, it just seemed like you you know, you know, were able to let your creativity show. Uh, you looked a lot more loose as you're watching the TV and seeing George uh, fight. But nevertheless, you looked so comfortable in there. Uh, what was it like to get your glow back to you know, feel that comfortable and to actually uh, go out there and just do your thing? I think I was comfortable in the Wonder Boy fight. I think I got uncomfortable after I broke my hand. So to correct you a little bit, I think I'm always comfortable in the cage. I have a lot of cage fights. So, you know, uh, what's your name again? Uh, David. Yeah, your turn, bro. How was your hand going into this fight? Uh, it was, uh, I thought it was great until I put those little gloves on and it didn't feel too good. So uh, I think I need a couple more months of uh, some smart recovery and stuff like that before I jump back inside the cage. So fight international fight week probably wouldn't be the smartest thing to do, but shit. Uh, honestly, I'd probably fight in a month if it was Michael Chiesta. <laughs> And I saw, obviously, you hopped over the cage and spoke to Dana White. What did you exactly say to him? Uh, I said, next time, can I please talk a little bit more at the press conference? <laughs> I said, you know, I love you, right? Let's go get some new sneakers. Then I said, what's up, Mr. President? Then I hopped back over. Then I looked back and I was like, oh, shit, my bad, Tyson. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I just had fun, bro. It was just a good time. Nothing but fresh air and opportunity out there. And I try and take advantage of all of it. Yeah, appreciate you.